Another year older, another year more depressed. After covering 20 games this year, I think it's a great opportunity to decide which of these games I would rank as the best, and which ones I would rank as the worst of those that I have actually played this year. The criteria is quite simple. It's only on the list if I made an episode about it in the time span of 2017. Um, well, that's about it. Fifth freedom for all of these games, be them shitty or glorious. Dog's Life is an interesting game, maybe for the days in which simulating an animal meant just having a broken ass game that was purely YouTube fodder, Dog's Life offers a world that's fully interactive from the perspective of a dog. You can do anything that a dog can do as you travel across the United States looking for your bitch. Whether you want to take a dump on the floor in front of someone to annoy them, or chase cats and chickens, this game will let you fully explore the many possibilities of being a dog. Oh, and there's a story once you're done faffing about. This game is a lot of fun, but way more fun when you're not actually playing it, when you're just faffing about, shitting on things, and trolling random people. Not to mention that it also has a rather dark ending for a children's game, definitely making the experience worthwhile. Though heavily flawed and it doesn't have the greatest story or very good characters or anything, I find it to be a fun and rather ambitious game that offers a lot on a lot of fronts. If it appeals to you, then I think it's pretty decent as a dog simulator at the very least. So anyone who loves the idea of playing as a dog, give it a shot. You know that a game is going to be shite when the gold edition is an overglorified patch? Boy does this game deliver. Despite having a flashy opening showing you the greatest pictures that Shutterstock had in its bank at the time, and having some big name voice actors in it, the game plays like the video game equivalent of Rhapsody Kids Believe in Santa. Everything looks terrible and it's animated rather poorly as well. The game is incredibly glitchy and constantly shits itself and they get way too ambitious with the gameplay at times, forcing you to try several different gameplay types as you progress. The story on top of that is too much of an episode one, with half of it trying to dump as much exposition on you as it can, so that you're caught up, whilst the other half is just making you ask, oh, I wonder what this'll lead to. But sadly, nobody gives a shit if the stuff you know isn't interesting in the slightest. The characters are bland and have nothing to offer, the protagonist tries too hard to be Nathan Drake but comes across as being nothing at all, and his sister is probably the only interesting character who comes close to being somebody of interest in this entire fucking game. Oh, and there's zombies, because of course there is. Overall, no episode 2 has ever come out and I highly doubt that it ever will. Part of me hopes that it will since I could do with another good laugh at how bad this company is at putting games together. I have actually found a game on Steam which is made by the same people. Maybe they've cleaned up their act. Oh. Oh shit. Who would have thought that a Phoenix game might actually resemble something that's good? Though heavily flawed and incredibly simple and basic, Furry Tales is a rather competently put together and often well designed console RTS. Given that it was released as a budget game, below £20, at a time when everything was around 40 and offers a lot more than some AAA releases did at the time, I would say that this is a heavily flawed, uncut gem that was wrestled out of a dog turd. So it's a gem basically, it's just very shitty and covered in dirt. I knew quite a bit about this game going in, as I saw another review on it, and sadly it's just as I imagined. This game is incredibly fucking boring, offering nothing to the player and just wasting their time with boring ass trivial bollocks, 
The story is a watered down version of the PC game, which looks just as shit as the story that we get here. I mean, I know I wasn't expecting anything like the Count of Monte Cristo or anything, but fucking hell. Though this game is competent, that makes it somehow worse. It's completely and utterly boring, and I don't even feel like addressing how cynical, cheap, and shitty the characters and the world building is. Nothing is worth investing in, not even for a second, and this godforsaken piece of shit's only saving grace is the makeup game. Which, honestly, I wish I could make up more brats in this piece of wank, because that was the only fun that I had. <laughs> Unrest was a rather pleasant surprise for me, given that it was a rather enjoyable story with a number of interesting twists and turns, though it's far from flawless with a not very focused narrative and a lack of any form of actual gameplay. This game is thoroughly enjoyable for anyone who can get into it. It's pretty well written and has some sympathetic characters to contend with, and even manages to keep you invested by having so many relatable factions and characters. Overall, I'd recommend it to anyone who likes narrative-driven games, especially if you're not very good at the game part of the game, then you probably might enjoy this quite a lot. You know the expression, dropping the ball? Well, imagine someone dropping the ball, having it bounce up, and hit an elderly woman in the face, breaking her neck on impact, and having her fall off the edge of a balcony, splatting on a school bus driver's windshield, who then swerves straight into a petrol station, and detonates on impact, burning 50 children to a crisp, alongside with the orphanage next door. That's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. Like the show, this game doesn't set up anyone's expectations, and somehow, through being competently made and having some decent writing behind it, as well as having some consistent and fun characters, this game is pretty nicely put together. Using a Sims-like gameplay style, Desperate Housewives offers a mystery scenario in which the player character has to figure out their own past whilst dealing with a number of problems of the present. Problems like blackmailing teachers and the secret service, you know, your everyday shit. You know that I enjoyed this if I stayed up until 4am to complete it, due to the save feature malfunctioning. This is definitely a game I would recommend to anyone who it appeals to. For those who like the show or just find themselves curious about the game, or just like games with a strong narrative, I'd highly recommend this one. Possibly the worst game Phoenix has put out and the worst game I've played on this show. Everything about this is either boring, bland, idiotic, shallow, or incredibly incompetent. And the worst part is that it's marketed towards little girls. This game is an insult to its target market, and I feel for any girl who had to play this as a child, as it's pandering and painful to play, and the only reason that it doesn't flat out win is that it's actually a video game, unlike... Fuck this. This is the most boring experience I've ever been subjected to. This isn't a game. It doesn't qualify. The entire thing could be made in a book and it would be the exact same shit. Therefore, it's the worst non-game I've ever played. Yes, it's worse than Dinner Date. All you do is find hidden objects in an image and then click on them. It's so bloody pointless that I wanted to fucking die rather than advance any further into it. I could actually feel myself age with every passing second. 
On top of that, despite the fact that it's written around an Agatha Christie novel, it's impossible to get remotely interested in the story. So it takes so fucking long to get from story beat to story beat that you actually just lose interest in an Agatha Christie story entirely. It's like watching a good movie like The Godfather and having to stop to do a 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle every 10 minutes. Except some chuckle fuck has hidden the puzzle pieces all around the room and you have to get on your hands and fucking knees to find them all. Oh, and then someone jizzed all over the fucking puzzle. Some people might say that my criticisms are invalid because the hidden object games are a whole genre and therefore this is nothing special. Well, you know what I say to that? Fuck that. Hidden object games as a genre are shit. They don't even qualify as games. They don't even qualify as shit. They're the very embodiment of our failings as a species. Fuck this game. May there be a Tartarus for this game. A bleak and unending hell for it to dwell and fester in. I.e. I hope this game has to play itself when it dies. I made a little bit of money. 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 This is as close as it comes to a perfect game on this show. Which is kind of sad, but whatever. I've actually been playing Injustice 2 somewhat religiously since doing my review. And in all honesty, I think it's great and I think it gets better with each passing day. It's been heavily polished since its rather lacklustre predecessor. It's managed to use Mortal Kombat's tower mode to more or less give this game an immortal lifespan. Though it's not for everyone, it's great if you can get into it and with a long line of DLC characters that just keep rejuvenating it. I don't think I've actually enjoyed a one-on-one -on -one fighter this much since Tekken Dark Resurrection. I personally take great pleasure from this game, and I'm hyped as shit for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles debut in March. This has actually been quite an interesting year for the show. We've experienced so many weird and wonderful and truly amazing games that I just hope that 2018 can live up to it. I wish you all a fantastic new year, and that you yourself find great joy maybe have one or two misadventures worth talking about and that you don't play anything near as bad as some of the shit that I've had in this top five listing. Jesus Christ.